Why tarpon? Yes, sir. Um. I mean, tarpon are the ultimate inshore game fish, man. They're big, they're strong, they run, they jump. And the jumps are unbelievable, man. They're like, they sear into your brain and you never forget them. <laughs> Welcome to Key West, dude. When I started fishing here as a kid, I've been fishing here for, you know, 25 years, 20 years professionally. And I've, you know, probably seen a decline of, you know, 75, 80%. It's scary. Still one of the best tarpon fisheries on the planet, but when you see the kind of decline that I've seen, there's an urgency to this. I haven't been guiding that long, and um, things have changed a lot. You know, knowledge is key, right? So the ability to, like, learn the behaviors of the fish, what they do, how they do it, and then have my kid benefit from that and the future generations of the people growing up in the Keys and visiting the Keys is, is you know, that's what this place is built around, man, is the water and the animals that live here, you know? This is an activity that's, a, you know, for the Lower Keys is a $450 million economic engine. And if we do it right, nobody knows that we were out there, you know, and it's totally sustainable, it's repeatable. The big changes afflicting this fishery are interconnected. It's not just one thing. When you have a fish that swims thousands of miles throughout the course of the season, and you're talking about a variety of habitats that it's gonna frequent, it's just inherently challenging. That's why the science is so critical, e even for us to understand how can we be better sportsmen? How can we be better conservationists? We don't have those, those answers yet, and that's where BTT comes in. They're getting us those answers. So Bonefish and Tarpon Trust was originally funded by anglers. They were concerned to see their populations of permit, bonefish, and tarpon declining. Currently, tarpon are managed at the state level, uh, and each state has a different law for keeping uh, tarpon. Uh, for example, here in Florida, it's a catch and release only state. Uh, if you go to places like Louisiana, there's no limits at all. It's kind of unusual because here, at least in the state of Florida, uh, there's no actual harvest of, of tarpon. Um, so it's clear that there's something going on and we have to investigate what's happening at the biology and ecology level of these fish. When we bring a fish boat side, uh, we actually put it in a cradle or a sling. We flip that fish upside down and we remove a couple scales just on its belly. And then we're gonna insert this uh, acoustic transmitter and this transmitter will remain with this fish for the rest of its life. And each transmitter has a unique ID code. And so when this fish swims by an underwater listening station, it logs that detection. And while we have about 100 receivers here in the Florida Keys, there's many other researchers around the coast, on the Gulf and Atlantic, that's using the same technology. But we all share this data. 